Help us to serve and love. Help us, Lord, today to look at the things that we might be able to become involved in. And instead of thinking, oh, I don't want to do that, or I don't have time for that, help us to think that maybe that will reveal in us your life and your greatness. Help us to do that, Lord. Help us to be a servant today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you looked in Matthew, you found out that there was a third person involved in this little prayer request. There were two or three gathered together in Jesus' name. And who was it? James and John and who else? Mama. Mom was in there. I love this. Mom is there and going, come on guys, let's ask them. They're all three involved in that. They're all three. And in that story, he doesn't say, or they don't say, remember us when you come in your glory. They say, remember us when you come into your kingdom. In other words, they were thinking, hey, I want to have a place of authority in this kingdom. So before you get too mad at them, Think about it for a minute. Let me sit down. Let me sit down to really wrap my mind around this. Jesus didn't rebuke them. He didn't say, you guys are selfish, and mom, you put them up to it. He doesn't say any of that. He uses it as a teaching moment. And he doesn't rebuke them for their boldness. He rebukes them for their ignorance. You don't know what you're asking. Now, my kids ask for stuff all the time, but my kids never, ever, in all the years that they were living in our home, said, Daddy, bless me with a blessing. Never said that. Because I would say, what would I say? What do you want me to do? And that's exactly what Jesus did. Look in your Bible there. He says, they said, we want you to do whatever we ask. Have you ever prayed that prayer? <laughs> Many of you have not prayed that prayer. You need to pray that prayer. Say, Lord, I want you to do whatever I ask of you to do. Whatever I ask you to do. And what did Jesus say? You selfish tw twins. No, he didn't say that. He said, what do you want me to do? And they said, well, and you know the story. We want, we want to be up there. You know, we want to be in the kingdom and we want to be big shots in the kingdom. So that's what everybody wants. So Jesus tells them a story. And he tells him about the politicians and the people that are ruling and in positions of authority. And he says, that's not the way it works in the kingdom. In, in our American culture and around the world, the way it works is, if you're in a position of authority, if you're a king or a president or a vice president or a judge or a ruler, then you're greater than everybody else. Nobody can come see you. That's why I try to keep my door open in my office as a pastor because I'm not hidden in there and you got to go through several people. And I do screen my calls, you know. So if you call, you know, Benny, I'm, I might say, Benny, go somewhere. <laughs> no. You don't have to go through several people to get to me. But could you have an audience with the president? No, there's no way because he's great. So Jesus says, and in one other gospel writer, he takes a child and puts the child in the middle of them. You guys know that story. It says you got to become like this little child. Well, they don't have any authority. They don't have any possessions. They don't have any status, except that we love kids. You know, we love them. We love them to be around them to a point, kids. Don't get a big head here. <laughs> you know what I mean. Don't, don't, don't get out of line here. And, and Jesus uses a little child, the humble servant, the humility that we need, the attitude that we need as a servant. So are you guys getting this? Let me ask you a question. Are you going to be great in the kingdom? Are you serving? If you want to be first in the kingdom, I guess this was second in the kingdom, one on either side. So they're thinking, and mom is thinking, what happens if your son is the president? What would happen if you were the mom of the president? Uh, man, you'd have a lot of authority too. I mean, you could just go right into the White House if you're the mom. So the mom is in this deal too. So they're thinking, we're going to be top dog here. We're going to be the big shots in the kingdom. And Jesus said, no, 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 wait a minute. If you want that, then you've got to be the slave of everybody. You've got to be the last. By the way, that gives us a little insight into that. 
the first will be last and the last will be first. If you're the servant of all people, if you consider people better than yourself, as the New Testament says, worthy to be served, then God will exalt you greatly and reveal your greatness. So that's, that's hard to do. First of all, we've got to change our attitude toward serving. We've got to not think it beneath us to do things that may be menial or less famous people do. You don't see very many people serving in uh, political power, do you? That serve, they say they serve. They say they serve their constituents. But really, as Jesus said, they lord it over others. And then the ones that are above them lord it over them or take authority over them. So what do we do? How do we do that? I want you to think for a minute. Let's pray again because this is kind of hard. I don't want you to be a forced servant. I want you to be a willing servant. I don't want you to do it because you have to. I want you to do it because God has worked in your heart to do that. So let's pray that he would help us to do that. This morning, Lord, we pray that you would work in us so much. We say it all the time, Lord. Shine through us. Let others see you in us. Help us to realize that one of those things that we have to be, we have to do, is to be a servant of others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at this verse with me again. Mark 9, 35. He sat down. Now for me, when I preach, what do I do? I stand up because that's our culture. But Jesus, when he taught, he sat down. So everybody knew he was getting ready to teach. He said, he called the 12 because they were arguing on the road. Another writer writes that they were walking down the road arguing about who was going to be the greatest. So when James and John and their mom got in there, the others were really hot. They thought, these guys are going to get the best spots. So Jesus, Jesus is saying, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Sit down here and let's have a little chat. He said to them, if anyone desires to be first, he shall be last of all and servant of all. So guys, do you want that? And right away their, their minds are whirling. Their minds are spinning, saying, well, I don't know. I, I, I think I want to make money and have a lot of wealth so that I can let other people do those things for me. I don't think I want to serve other people. He completely wrecked their whole world. And this should be wrecking our whole way of thinking about things. The servants are the ones that, at the Olympics that are running around making sure they've got towels. You see the people with the towels for the swimmers? And what are those swimmers doing? They're just grabbing the towels. You know, they're the ones that are the great ones because they're making everything happen. Somebody's got to clean that swimming pool. Somebody's got to put those chemicals in there. Somebody's got to fix up all that stuff. Somebody's got to have their snacks and their water and all that stuff that they do. They're the greatest ones. We're watching TV looking who's going to win gold, silver, and bronze when the greatest ones there are the servants of all those Olympians. We got it all wrong. We got it all wrong. And that's the way things are. So we can't change the way they are, but what we can do is we can become servants. And whenever you do that, guys hold the door open for your wife when you get in the car. Sons and daughters, you know, sons open the door for your sister. Now that's a hard thing to do. Humble yourself. Now that's what I try to teach my kids. I love it when a guy opens a door for a girl, it's not that the girl is better or the guy's, actually the guy there is being a servant, right? And what that, what that shows is that shows humility and service. Most of the time guys were doing it because our wife's already five or 10 minutes late. We're saying, get in the car, come on. <laughs> I just blew that whole illustration, didn't I? I blew the whole thing. You remember, we had that message on how long we wait for our wives, you know? over the course of a lifetime. <laughs> Blew it again, I know. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, you guys get the point.
point, now when you go out into the public, you pick out the servants. You pick them out. They're the greatest. They're the greatest. They don't count. They get run over. The people are impatient with them. And Jesus says, they're the great ones. But we got to change our attitude. we got to change our attitude. Notice what Matthew said. Look here at 2311, Matthew 2311. But he who is greatest among you, among you, don't miss that little phrase, shall be your servant. So the greatest here at Eastwood Baptist Church may not be, it's not me. I know that it's not me. I'm your pastor, I'm your shepherd. I should serve too. But there are far greater servants in this church than me. They're greater. So don't put me on the pedestal. Let's outdo one another, as the New Testament says, in serving and showing zeal. You know, I see it sometimes in the kitchen. I see it when you've got a bunch of people in the kitchen, men or women, and they've got the gift of serving. You know what happens? You get all those servants in the kitchen, and they're trying to outdo one another and serve. No, I'll do that. I'll do that. Let me do that. You know, they're trying to outdo one another in the kitchen. And that's fine, I'll let them do that. <laughs> because if I'm in the kitchen, there's a big problem. There's a big, huge problem. So do you want to be great today? Now here, listen, I need to really sit down to say this. Do you want to be great? Because if you don't, you got a problem. You don't want to be in the kingdom? You don't want to serve in the kingdom? At least their prayer request, listen to me, it was bold, it was faith. I want to be in that kingdom. I believe that that kingdom is coming. I believe that you're going to reign in it. So that is huge as far as faith is concerned. So if you go, well, I don't care. I just want my little rincon in el cielo. No, don't say that. I just want my little corner of heaven. That was Spanish. I just want my little corner in heaven. No, you don't. I want everything that you've got. Or do whatever I ask you to do. What do you want me to do? Well, I want, a, I want this. So ask big. Dream big, and then let Jesus say no. No, you don't know what you're asking for. If you're not asking big, if you're not dreaming big, if we're not as a congregation looking big, then what are we doing? I mean, why are we here? So don't think that that other is reverse humility that says, oh, I just want to get in. No, you don't want to just squeak in. You want to be the thief on the cross? And just barely get in by the skin of your teeth, as we say. Or in Corinthians, it says, saved by fire, and all your works are all burned up, and you go, man, I made it. Yeah, it's going to be great to be in heaven, but you also want to be there and serving and, and, and living with him in that kingdom, because that's where you're going to be forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. There's no jealousy in heaven. So if you guys got a bigger and a better position in heaven, praise the Lord than me. That's great. I hope you do. I hope you do. But don't say, oh, I just want to get there. You know, I just want to get across the finish line. And maybe that's another message about endurance. Are you guys following me? Amen. Amen. Okay. All right. Look at some of these other thoughts. And these are really my thoughts. Notice this. Jesus is not offended by our bold requests. He doesn't correct us before we realize what we're asking. He corrects us after. Because he doesn't just cut us off. That way we would never ask. That's a stupid thing to ask. No, he didn't say that. That was bold. That was brazen. Maybe it was selfish. But he explains why. Like James and John, sometimes we do not know what we're asking. I mean, I've asked for stuff. And then in the process of time, I realized that's really not what I want. You know, some of you are asking for a, and I don't like to use this illustration, but it's a good one. You're asking for a skateboard, and he wants to give you a GTO. He wants to give you a Malibu, you know, that really flies, or a Camaro that has a big motor in it, and you're asking him for a skateboard. And he's going, are you sure you want a skateboard? Yeah, Lord, that's all I want is a skateboard. That's not the, it's not the, you know, the health, wealth, and prosperity gospel where everybody has a Cadillac. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you asking boldly. And then when he says no, he explains why. You don't know what you're asking. 
So I would really like to have a no sometimes so I can do what? Keep on asking. Like he says in Matthew 7, ask and keep on asking. So if he says no, then I'm going to ask again, but I'm going to try to ask big. And that's coming up here. We're going to ask you guys to participate in the capital campaign that's coming up. And when you look at that overall, you're going to say, wow, that's really cool. But that, maybe that's too big for us. I don't know what you're going to think. But we're asking him. I'm praying. And I want to ask you to ask him to do some great and mighty things here. Asking reveals our motives and our desires. John, James and John knew right away what their motives were and they were exposed before the whole bunch of But all those other guys wanted those positions too. They just didn't have the guts to ask. They all wanted to be great. So James and John stood up to the plate and said, we'll take it. I'll take it, give it to me. There are, and this is a statement that I made right out of the scripture, there are positions in the kingdom. You are going to have a position in the kingdom. So if you serve now, your position in the kingdom is going to be great. It's, it's going to be flipped. It's that irony of the kingdom. If you're great now, but weren't a servant, you might not be great in the kingdom. Now I know that that won't matter because there's no sin and jealousy in the kingdom. But don't you want to serve the Lord in the kingdom? Sure you do. Sure you do. There are positions in the kingdom Greatness is measured by serving. And then lastly, this is the most difficult. We need the attitude of the servant. We need that attitude. So in the invitation, when you come forward, and I hope that you will, there'll be to do one of several things. One is to say, God, I want to serve in this church. I want, if you're not serving now, if you're not in a position now, and I'm going to explain that in just a minute before our invitation, so you can know. You know, when we say we need children's workers, some of you just turn that right out. You say, well, I've already done that. I served over here, over there. But you know what we need? We want to protect our kids, so we have to have two workers in a class with students. So you not, might not be the teacher. You might just be present in that class to love on those kids, to help those kids, to be part of that class. We're not necessarily asking you to teach children or to become a mom again. But we're asking you to serve because if we're gonna keep our kids safe, we gotta have two people in those classes. Students, children, young children, nursery, all the way down the line. So when you think about that request, what we're saying is we wanna keep our kids safe. Will you help us to do that? So don't read into that I'm going to be in charge and I'm going to be reading and studying on the weekend and I don't want to do that. You may not even have the gift of teaching. We don't want you to teach if you don't have that gift. But you can serve in a, in a capacity. We need you in the youth. We need you in the children's. We need you in the nursery, especially in the nursery. All right, here's some ways you can serve and, and we'll be done. With our host team, Jeremy had two meetings recently. Those are greeters, ushers, those are people in the foyer that say welcome to Eastwood, young, old, tall, short, whatever, whoever you are, just smile and help us to greet people. Working at the coffee bar, helping with that, serving. Going out into the parking lot, we already have some guys doing that, and saying glad we're at Eastwood. I helped a lady find her children, the children's department where her child was going to be dropped off. You can do that too. In our nursery, we need people in our nursery. We need them there. And you may not be changing the diaper. You may just be in there helping and holding one of those kids and showing them the love of Jesus. Our preschool, our children, our youth department, we need you. We need you in those areas. Our prayer ministry, we're refurbishing a room right over to my right. And we're going to have a ministry. You may want to sign up for this today where you're praying during our worship service. But listen how this is going to work. I love this. You're going to come into the worship service for the first initial singing and praising of the Lord. And then you're going to slip out into that room and you're going to pray that everything that happens would be according to the will of God. 
And then during the invitation, you're going to come back in and kneel here and pray for people to be saved. So you'll still have an experience of worship. And we'll stream that in there, in that room, so you can see what's going on. But you're a prayer warrior. And we're going to do that in morning services and in evening services when we have that. And there'll be a counseling room there. So you may want to be part of our counseling team that comes forward and prays with people during the worship service. Okay, what else? Benevolence. We fixed up the annex. It's not done yet, but we have food and clothing. We need people to sort clothes. So ladies, you could come and help us. Men, you could help us sort clothes, wash clothes, take clothes home, bring them back, hang them up, sort the food, put food on the shelves, help the poor when they come to the church. And there's more to that. I'm just giving you a quick overview. Visitation. I'm not the only one that should go to the hospital. You guys need to go too, and some of you are going, some of you deacons are going. But you can visit people that are in your Sunday school class. You can visit people in the nursing homes. Serving. Nursing homes are really hard to go to because they don't smell good, you know, and people are sitting there in their chairs with their head down, and you know end of life stuff. And so you can go in and you can visit people and minister to them, be Jesus to them. We need drivers to pick up kids. Where's Laura? Are you in here or she's with the kids? Over there? You're bringing way too many kids. We don't have no. See, that's not true. We brought 900 on buses here. Maybe it's time to renew that picking kids up again. You know? Maybe. And driving vans. If you don't have a CDL driver's license, you can drive a van. Pick up kids. And then lastly... <laughs> And I'm putting this there because I'm doing a little knowing and I'm trying to work myself out of a job. We're looking for five families, Bob. We need to make our place look good. Noel Vance is trimming the bushes, but we need some color out there. We need some people to come and make this place look good when they drive out. So if you can do that at home, man, we'd love you to do that here. We'd love you to do that here. Make this place look good on the outside. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. So let's make a good impression on people when they come up to the building. These are just a few things. There's other stuff you can do. The community meal, you can help there. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. Stand with me and let's pray together. And I guess what I'm doing is I'm asking you to get involved somewhere. Count the cost. Pray and ask God what He have you to do. And just remember, it will reveal your greatness, your servant. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for this simple scripture. We thank you that James and John were bold to ask. And now we're reading about their, we might call it a mistake, but I don't think so, Lord. You wanted to show us that if we're searching for greatness, then we need to be a servant. So give us an attitude, Lord. Let your servant attitude rise up in us, your spirit, your Holy Spirit, to let us humble ourselves and serve. Let us outdo one another in serving and in zeal. Lord, I pray that you would just turn us loose in this town called Tulsa, Broken Arrow, Bixby, Jenks, Sand Springs, and Fulpa. Tusa, Shoto, Owasso, Collinsville. This is our Jerusalem here. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys come. Neil, if you're not sure, you want to serve, but you're not sure, just come.